Another new week as we bring you racing locally in the full detail as we preview all the local media. And I'm happy to say that we start our local week as of Monday. We're back in Kabeja, this time on the poly track, no features, but it looks competitive. Small fields, but as we all know that those small fields that can present a lot of banana skins. All right, so it'll be an age racer program that is commencing at 1240. And that is where that bipod commences. Now, as far as the race number one is concerned, and it is Gav Smith who may just uh, get uh, the uh, all the money in race one of the two best intentions, the two to one. 11 to four is the six of Sierra Sky, a recent relocatee from the high felt. 15 to four, the one Tartan Queen, it's five to one. And uh, better bar those. Well, Nino, it's a very good morning to you. We're back with you in uh, Gobeka, but this time it is on the poly after what was a very good afternoon's racing last uh, Sunday, Friday rather, in uh, Gobeka, with the feature race being one most in Incredibly and the most impressively by the Anakriev stable. How are you doing? Yeah, good morning, uh, Cecil. Yes, I, I'm doing good uh, and uh, was very good racing on Friday. Enjoy him. The most impressive winner from the Kriev stable. Uh, uh, getting back to, uh, to the first race today on the poly, uh, I'll see this money for number six, uh, Sierra Sky. I don't know, form from Jaybig is not very good. But that's a kind of horse that could improve uh, to run in the money. I, I, I think number two, the four-year-old Philly, best intention. If that brings a, the earlier form, she should have a big chance. I make the danger number seven, uh, Royal Venus, who's got the beating of number five. But I, I, then I did add the five in the Bible. So the numbers are two, seven, five, and six. Two, seven, five, and six. And I see there has been a plunge on the four double trade. Last night was 22 to 1. Now you can get 9 to 1 about a double plunge. And let's just keep an eye on that by the time we get to race number one. Your bipod outlay is at 360 Rand, and that's got to be on with the running of race one at 1240. All right, so we continue with our preview for uh, Quebec's uh, Fairview meeting, which uh, continues with the race two due off at 13.15, and that popular bet, that commences with that uh, second. I'm talking about the place accumulator. Now, as far as changes in race number two are concerned, I do not have any at uh, hand right now. The uh, two guarding the wall is a very, very popular bet uh, this afternoon. I think for many, the best bet on the afternoon, 9 to 10, has been shortened in further to 17 and to 20. 7 to 2 is the one winning captain. The four, Jumbo Sana, 7 to 2, 13 to 2, and uh, better bar those. Well, there's absolutely no reason why uh, the uh, two horse guarding the wall should go missing from that uh, bipod, uh, the PAs, and indeed, if it was the case of taking a win bet, it should be the one. It comes down in class, it comes in with solid form. Only question, will the poly track uh, be a, any, any kind of obstacle? Oh, well, we'll see that today, but uh, if he takes to the poly, then surely he will win. Uh, I think he's down in class, drawn one, Louis McCox were up, a perfect distance. The only slight concern, like you say, is the poly. He's only just got to take to the poly to win. And I make him a very, very strong selection and banker in, in uh, all bets, especially the PA. I cannot see it not running the first three. Confidence, and I think the form speaks for itself. Guard in the wall is a win selection from Nino. I guess you'd have to use that in an all to come. I think that's the only way you can really get the best out of Guard in the wall. But let's have a look at that PA. We know that it is going to be the two banker, and then a couple of twos that to round off our PAs in a race is a seven and eight, two in race six and uh, race seven rather, and a two in race eight. 120 round the outlay, and that is our PA for this afternoon. Well, that uh, EPL is uh, in full swing now, and uh, what a weekend of uh, soccer. We had uh, 30 goals in total, I counted, over the uh, f third legs uh, fixtures, and uh, we can only get better from there and some lovely, lovely soccer. And, of course, I hope you took a bet on a Betway's platform because uh, you would have got some uh, good value. I think there was only one team that didn't concede a goal, if uh, memory serves me right. Let's get into race number three, and this is the first leg of the pick six. The Mary Trail is 64. Distance is 1,000 meters. And uh, the favorite is a recent relocatee once again. Five Knockham Stiff has had the one run on the poly and a very encouraging one indeed, 19 to 10. The Mr. Bodacious is a 3 to 1. 
the uh, three Cruzador 7292 and better bar those. I should just add that there is an adjustment uh, to the betting due to the scratching off by the eight Mediterranean, Mediterranean goddess who was a winner last time out as well as stable companion number nine running for the stars and also scratched as the seven war launch. Right, Mr. Podesta, rock, rock me stiff, that, knock him stiff rather. That is uh, the favorite one run in the province. It was on the poly track over the 1,100 meters. So that at least is a relief, finishing third, a length and a half behind Lady Crusade. Yeah, very, very good run first time out on the poly, as you say, over the 1100, and was only collared late. So I think the the the, the, the 100 meters less is going to suit him down to the ground. And I, I really like the look of this, uh, Cecil, and, I, and it looks to me like uh, Sharon Cotton could ride uh, a, a quick fire double. Also drawn one, Louis McCoxwa, uh, should be very hard to beat. I made the nearest danger number six great times, and then Crusador, and then uh, number two, which is uh, 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 Mr. Bodacious. And also please note that I did include the eight in my bet, and if they want to take it out, uh, they could do so. Or just leave it in. If the tote favourite wins, you'll double up. And you sound like you're confident that the tote favourite should win, so leave the eight in there. The outlay is only 120 rand, so I guess it would uh, pay you to uh, leave it in there in case the favourite does come through win. The uh, PA gets underway at uh, 10 minutes to two. Well, Betway, they are deeply stooped in that uh, soccer. I see a lot of, uh, in fact, one particular team from uh, the UK have actually taken on to advertising, especially targeting the South African market. And they're quite a good advert, in fact, to featuring the Arsenal players. And that is a bet. Now, we're going to go to race four, conditional maiden. It's over the 1,400 metres, and the operative word there is conditional. Now, as far as the betting, we've got an 18 to 10 favour, the three, Brighton Bay. Uh, that is at 18 to 10. And never let the five, a smart view, is now into 22 to 10. Number two, Son of E, Rupt is at 72. It's five to one. And uh, better bar those. Nino, you follow UK soccer at all? Yes, I do. Very What's much your team? So. What's your team? Uh, my team is Chelsea. Always has been. Oh, good man. Good man. All right. Oh, you held to a draw yesterday at Crystal, by Crystal Palace, huh? Yeah. At a yeah. Bridge, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But I uh, know. Let's yeah, make I back think... the let's make back the money that you lost on your Chelsea team uh, on uh, the uh, jackpot in uh, February, the first one. I see you've thrown in your eggs in one basket. As far as race number seven is concerned, I caught a peak preview of uh, your uh, jackpot, and it is the two a uh, must win in that seventh race. Yes, uh, uh, in the seventh race, can a member? I think uh, down in class will take a power of beating. But uh, getting back to race number four now, and I think there's only four horses that can win it. And I would not be leaving Son of Iraq out because this is a very weak maiden. And this horse, uh, the ex-Michael uh, Miller trained horse from Durban, uh, show market improvement in this kind of a field. Uh, but my, my first uh, selection remains number th uh, three, Bryden Bay, to beat Son of Iraq, Smart View, and then the only the horse that could upset the apple cart is number six, Elusive Hunter. Okay, so there it is. Two, three, five, and six. And the order preference is a three from two, five, and then the six. That is the three. Brighton Bay currently at 18 to 10 in a race number four, Kelly Mitchley and the Sean Field. Right, we get into the second half of our eight race program coming through from Gobeka as we get into that first leg of the second jackpot race number five. Now, this is a handicap, a 62, and that's over the 1400 meters. And currently, your favorite is the four, Eat, a Pray, Love, and that is at 22 to 10. The two Dawn of Gold is at 9 to 2. 5 to 1 is a five a flower festival, and uh, thereafter, it is 11 to 2 and uh, better bar those. Well, this would be a good winner for the uh, ownership. They had a very good winner in uh, KZN yesterday afternoon, uh, Mr. Podesta. I don't know if you were following Scottsville Racing, but uh, for Eat, Pray, Love, in the colors of uh, the Vernus family, that is the one it seems they all have to beat on uh, paper. In fact, one is Maiden over the uh, poly track, and that was over today's uh, distance. A uh, course and distance specialist is uh, number four, Eat, uh, Pray, Love. Is that your first choice? No, I've actually not even included it in my bet. <laughs> All and, right. Uh, Give us your thoughts. Yeah, yeah well, it comes from a, a number 10 draw, and it's running. Uh, it's only just one of my eight, and I know it's run against uh, Splice, the main brace, 
And uh, I don't know what happened to it last time. But my clear first choice is number two, uh, Cecil. I thought it, uh, it was very impressive with the blinkers. The blinkers stay on. I think that's a horse to beat. And the only other horse that I thought could give it a, a, a run for its money uh, was number eight, uh, Col Colorama, at a nice price. Then, uh, for those that want to add in, I would uh, suggest to add in number five, Flower Festival, and number four, Eat, Pray, Love. But for me, two and eight, I think we'll survive the PA at least. Okay, survive the PA, and it seems they should see us survive the first leg of the second jackpot, where you've given us a selection with a full outlay of six rand. So that is, once again, the two twos at the back there, races seven and eight, will suffice that to see us through. That's your second jackpot starting at three o'clock. Well, it looks tight at the top as we get into race number six. The last chance to get involved in a pick three as we start off the new week with racing on Monday, coming through from a fair view. Race number six is a racing 244 racing for you, Merit trade at 64. It's over the 1600 meters, and it is quite competitive as far as the betting is concerned. The one, a breed baby. That is a 22 to 10, having been shortened in from 13 to 5. Number 6, a union factor. Number 5, hugs and high fives is the 28 to 10. And then good support for the 6, union rose. 9 to 2 has been shortened all the way down to 3 to 1. 11 to 2, and a better bar those. Race number 6, how do you see this panning out? You know, it's over the 1,600 metres. Richard Free for Alan Crave. He's got about four or five rides this afternoon, Richard. And the breed baby seems to be the shortest price that we've encountered. Yeah, and it was fancied last time by the stable, but it was disappointing and trying the poly for the first time. That could be uh, uh, the horse to beat. Uh, Mr. Maloney hasn't run for 110 days, but I thought he took on some strong horses in uh, in Durban. Uh, the likes of uh, Down by the River, Lucky Dollar, Tom, at Safe Space, that won two in Joburg. So if, uh, if he's okay after the rest, I think he could be a big runner. And then Hugs and I-5. Now, he's been disappointed, disappointing on the poly, and he's run his best two races on the turf. But uh, he's got to have a chance. So for me, 1, 2, and 5. Uh, 1, 2, and 5, that would be the first leg of uh, the uh, last uh, pick 3, 1, 2, and 5. And then we've got the Banker 2 and Banker 2 again. That is a uh, race number 6, a field of uh, 6 as uh, set to face up. And a form update before we round off. The uh, 6 captains walk have finished 10th. Uh, 8.65 lengths in the last race of the afternoon at uh, Fairview behind a dancing to the light who was made a good thing by Nina. So that is 10th, 8.65 lengths behind over a distance of 1,400 meters. All right, so let's get uh, to the last uh, double then. It is the start, uh, race number seven off at 16.15. A play soccer, 6.10 and 13. Merit rate at 6.4. This time we step up and trip our longest race of the afternoon at 2,200 metres. And as far as any outstanding form updates, there are none to allude to. So the favourite is uh, the uh, two. Surprise, surprise. Kenny Mumbo. That is at the 19 to 10. We've got 28 to 10 about the one. Walt Whitman. That has actually been shortened into 28 to 10. And then we're looking at uh, the uh, 9 to 2 about the 9. Bella's the first to wave. Right, uh, pray tell. Kenny Mambo has done enough to convince you. Course and distance uh, run last time. And that was uh, finishing third, less than a half a length of the in Kozana, as far as uh, the form line is concerned. And looking at uh, Walt Whitman comes through as uh, the three-year-old in the race. And that last run was on the turf. That was uh, finishing just under 10 and a half lengths behind the Makozole, but that was in a feature, steps up and trip. Right, tell us some more about Kenny Mambo and why you don't want to know about anything else. Well, because if the Inkosana uh, was in this race, I would make that a, 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 almost a penalty kick. So I think it's come down in class, a, a big drop in class, and I think it's, uh, uh, that he, he's going to be very, very tough to beat uh, Cecil. Uh, uh, Walt Waltman, uh, a maiden winner, is carrying half a kilo more than Kenny Mambo. So I don't see much opposition in this race, and I think uh, Kenny Mambo is going to take a, a power of beating. Will pulverize the field, as you'd say. Yeah, probably <laughs> pulverize. And, All right. Uh, and Cecil, yes, just sir. getting back to race six, uh, I just believe that uh, uh, number eight has been scratched. Uh, number Captain's eight. Wolf, so we don't have 
Yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment. Let's just just confirm. Okay, so the eight has been scratched, but that uh, wasn't part of your selections at all. So that leaves us a field of seven for race number six. Please do take note. All right, so that was uh, race six uh, scratching, and now we're looking at uh, race seven, the very bullish selection. Number two, Kenny Mumbo in the colors of uh, Mr. Andrade, S. Gaskell, and they've got a partner here, Mr. N. N. Acer, in uh, the partnership of the two, Kenny Mumbo. Well, Gerardo Proceedings in Quebec this afternoon is another conditional maiden, and we dropped down by 200 meters to a distance of 2,000 meters as opposed to the uh, B preceding race, which was uh, 2,200 meters. Now we've got <laughs> Global Reef in the same silks, and that is at even Sean Veal uh, for with uh, Kelly Matchley. And then the uh, rest of the runners, well, it is uh, looking at uh, number one, Lady Capulet, that's 11 to 2, 6 to 1, the 6 Sun Drop. 13 to 2, the 7 accumulate, and the outsider is the 5 uh, fearless uh, badger. Now, just to confirm, we've got those scratchings of 3, he's a goal, the 4 take a mulligan, and the 8 sister midnight. So that'll leave us with the field of uh, 4 for this conditional maiden. And uh, the 2 global reef suddenly looks more attractive to you, I'm sure. Yes, and you said it's even money. Well, it was even, even money uh, before the scratchings were uh, factored in, and is now 5 uh, to 10. 5 to 10 now. <laughs> Yeah, surely uh, on, on the Jaybeck form, this also is going to be impossible to oppose. And I think Kelly Mitchell, Sean uh, will will ride uh, the last double. And uh, Banker in the pick six, uh, you've got to Banker this in the pick six, uh, Cecil. No, I think it is a banker all the way. And if this one doesn't come in, and then uh, we are in a big, big trouble because there's nothing else to beat, even though it's a conditional maiden and the likes of the best weight in the seven accumulate. I think you have to go some to beat the two Global Reef. Well, Nina, let's hope it's a good, positive start to the week. We will be looking forward to uh, catching up with you again this coming Friday as we start another weekend of uh, racing locally and internationally. Have a good day, sir.